Welcome to Unleash the Awesome with Dave Gambrill. All of us have unique skills, talents, and abilities that aren't being used to their full potential. Our mission is to share the people, tools, apps, and other resources that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. Hey there, friends. This is Dave Gambrell. Welcome to another episode of Unleash the Awesome. Today, I want to talk about the four phases of learning, the four steps of learning, and I'm going to overlay a training by Ken Blanchard from his Situational Leadership 2 program and book and course that they have out because I want you to understand as you are doing something new, as you're growing a business, as you're growing your email list, as you're building your opt-in pages, whatever it is, as you're writing your book, as you're starting your podcast, whatever it is that you are trying to do you are going to go through these four phases, not just all those things I mentioned, but in anything new that you learn. And the problem because, becomes there's just one stage, one step where dreams go to die. And I want to make sure you're fully aware of this phase, this step, this part of the process, so that when you get there, you can learn how to power through it. Okay, so let's talk about the four phases of learning. The first phase is known as unconscious incompetence unconscious incompetence meaning you have no idea that you don't know what you're doing okay and ken blanchard through their situational leadership 2 framework they would call this the enthusiastic beginner so that means you're excited you're ready to go you want to do something new yay i want to launch a podcast i want to run a marathon i want to lose 30 pounds i want to do whatever you're so excited you're so fired up. You're so jacked up. Maybe you went to a conference. I just recently got back from a conference called Funnel Hacking Live. Lots of energy, lots of excitement. I know there's a lot of people who had a lot of great ideas and they're in this phase now. They don't know what they don't know and they're super excited. So they're the enthusiastic beginner. And I know, I know that a lot of people are going to get stuck in this next phase and probably quit on whatever that idea was, whatever that dream was, whatever that concept is that they wanted to do, they wanted to launch, this next step is where it can get really, really tough. So first phase, first step of the learning process, unconscious incompetence, or we also call them the enthusiastic beginner. Okay, so step two, and this is where it gets really tough, and this is where most goals will die. We call phase two conscious incompetence, meaning we now know that we don't know what we're doing. And the enthusiasm has worn off a little bit. And we're like, oh, crap, now there's work to do. Now I need to learn something. Now I actually need to sit down and go through a process of building my page or doing whatever it is. See, in situational leadership, they call this the disillusioned learner. Disillusioned learner. Because you're going to have to learn something new and there's ways you can do it you can listen to podcasts you can take courses you can go to conferences there's all kinds of resources available to you i'm pretty sure no matter what it is you're trying to do the information is out there the information that you need to succeed is out there there's really no secrets anymore with the internet you can find just about anything you need to help you power through but here's the problem as you hit this phase, the reason why Ken Blanchard calls him the disillusioned learner is you get in this phase and you go, ugh, I didn't realize work was going to be involved. I didn't realize I was going to have to do something here. Oh, this is hard. This is tough. Oof, I'm not sure I want to continue to do this. And that is why in this phase right here, one of the exercises I do with my coaching clients is we get in touch with their why or with their purpose. Why did they start this thing in the first place? What was the purpose of doing this? And we will revisit that, and I will make sure that we anchor and cement that why so that the why makes them cry. Either tears of joy when they actually achieve it, or maybe tears of sorrow if they don't. And that's what you have to do when you get in this phase. You are going to run into this anywhere you go. right? Mike Tyson, one of my favorite philosophers to quote mike tyson has famously said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth and that's what happens in this phase you get punched in the mouth so you have to revisit what it is 
you were trying to do in the first place, the purpose, the why. Okay. And so if your why is strong enough, you will power through. Now, what can happen here is there's two ways to solve this problem. Either one, if you have more time than money, so maybe you're bootstrapping this thing and you're trying to get started and you have a little bit of money to make this happen, then probably what you're going to do is learn these processes on your own. You're going to do the research. You're going to look it up. You're going to read the books. You're going to listen to the podcast. You're going to do a lot of this learning and applying on your own. However, if you are maybe working a full-time job and your significant other or spouse is also working a full-time job and you're building your side hustle, and so you have some money, you just don't have a lot of time, right? You're trying to do things with your work and your family and everything else, then maybe you have more money than time, and so maybe you can not worry so much about the how, and you can go find the who, the who. And so there's people that can help you with your stuff. You can go to sites like Fiverr and 99designs and all kinds of places like that for help online. But if you are doing uh, something physical, like physical training, uh, you want to lose some weight, you want to run a marathon, whatever, you can go hire some really good running coaches or personal trainers who will help you get the results you are looking for in this phase. So instead of you having to learn and put together your exercise routine or your workout routine or figure out what your macros are for your diet, you can hire somebody who will help you do all of that. And then you actually still have to do the work. You can't outsource the running of a marathon to somebody else, unfortunately. Uh, so you still have to go through the process, but you could find somebody to help you. And that is actually what I have found to be one of the, if there's a shortcut to this process, that is one of the best ways. You find somebody that's already done it or has helped other people do it, and you buy their course, you buy their coaching, you go to their conference, whatever it is, because they will map out a roadmap or a success path that has worked for other people, and then you can borrow that and adapt it to whatever your unique situation is, okay? So that is phase two, okay? The conscious incompetence. Now we know that we know what we're not, we, we don't know what we're doing. We know that there's information that we need to learn or find somebody that can do that stuff for us, okay? And that's why it's called the disillusioned learner. So first phase was the enthusiastic beginner or unconscious incompetence. We don't even know that we don't know what we're doing. Phase two is the disillusioned learner or the conscious incompetence, okay? Phase three. Phase three is conscious competence, conscious competence, meaning we now know what we're doing, but we have to think about it and it's not automatic and we're not in the zone and we're still a little cautious. We're still a little hesitant and we're still looking for perhaps feedback either from our body if we're doing something physical. So maybe we went out and we ran the miles or we did the bench press and the squat and the kettlebell swings and all that stuff. And now we're really sore the next day. Or maybe we posted something on Instagram or did a Facebook Live or launched a podcast and we started to get feedback, also known sometimes as criticism. And now perhaps we're not so sure we want to continue. So this is called conscious competence. We know what we're doing and we're doing it and we can do it and we can continue to do it. But Ken Blanchard and his team call this capable but cautious, capable, but cautious. So you can do it, but you're not, it's not really automatic yet. And you still need to think about it. You still need to go through the steps. And this is probably the second most vulnerable place because now that you've figured out how to do these things, especially if you're going to put some new art out into the world. So if you're going to do a podcast or Facebook lives or Instagram stories or write a book or whatever, I can guarantee you that as soon as you put it out there, there are people whose sole job on this planet is to criticize you and to tear you down because a lot of people, unfortunately, the only taste of success they will ever have is when they take a bite of yours. So you better know when you put something out there that people are going to criticize it, tell you it sucks. This is awful. This is the dumbest thing I ever read. People are going to unsubscribe from your email list, your podcast, all that stuff, your YouTube channel. Just know that it's coming. It's part of the process. And if they do that, that's great because if you're trying to build a business like I am, and you're using some online uh, mechanisms to make that happen, then you don't want people subscribing to your stuff or being on your email list or following uh, if they're unhappy, if the message that you're sharing doesn't resonate with them, it's dumb for them to stick around. And frankly, if they're not going to read your emails and they're not going to uh, listen to your podcast, do you really think they're going to pay for your thing? They're going to pay for your course? They're going to buy your book? 
they're going to come to your conference? I don't think they will, actually. But just be aware that when you get in this phase and once you get it started and you start putting things out there, you are going to get criticism. And sometimes it comes from people very close to you. Sometimes it'll come from yourself. You'll do a podcast or a Facebook Live or something and you'll watch it or listen to it. And you're like, I don't like the sound of my voice. I don't like the way I show up. I don't like the way I look on camera. I need to lose another 10 pounds before I do that ever again. Right. And you find all these excuses to perhaps not do it. And sometimes people very close to you who don't understand quite know the mission that you're on or the purpose behind what it is you're doing will say things like oh honey do you really want to put that out there or i know you're trying really hard baby but but this this is not very good <laughs> or do, do you really want to put yourself in that situation or the worst the most insidious is the who do you think you are right who do you think you are are you are you qualified to do that do you have the certifications to do that you'll get some of those criticisms from people very close to you and you have to know that a lot of times they mean well. They're just trying to make sure that you don't get hurt because they haven't figured out that failure and criticism is all part of the process. So just know when you get to this phase, the conscious competence or what Blanchard calls capable but cautious, as you start doing the thing, as you start putting the stuff out in the world, there are going to be some steps, some criticism, some things that are going to come back at you that you just need to be aware of and you need to power through that. Okay. So we got unconscious incompetence or enthusiastic beginner it's phase one phase two is conscious incompetence we don't know that or now we know that we don't know what we're doing and this is called the disillusioned learner step three is conscious competence meaning we now know what we're doing and we're starting to do it and starting to show some some proficiency okay we would call this capable but cautious and then the last phase is the self-reliant achiever or also known as unconscious competence, meaning we don't even have to think about it. We can just do it. So for me now, do, even doing this podcast, even though I just launched this podcast, it's not hard for me to turn on this microphone and start talking into it because I have been doing Facebook Lives and Instagram stories and Instagram TV and all these other things for a really long time. So it's not hard for me to turn on a microphone and start talking into it. But for other things, like actually launching the podcast and going through the the, the techniques and the, the, the tools and the website and all the other things that it takes to produce this. Yeah, I was in that disillusioned learner phase for a long time. And what it took for me to push through was I heard Russell Brunson this last weekend say something so earth shattering. It sounds really dumb on the surface, but if you think about it, it's, it makes a lot of sense. And this is what really helped me power through. My mission is to help all of you that are listening, unleash your awesome on the world. And I know that there are many different channels that I can do that. And so I was doing Facebook lives. I was doing all these things. And I was telling myself like, look, people can find me. People can see me. I'm doing all of these things on all of these channels. But Russell said something this weekend that I thought was really fascinating. He said, listen, people who read blogs, read blogs, and people who listen to podcasts, listen to podcasts. And people who watch YouTube videos, watch YouTube videos. And I was like, duh, Russell. And he said, no, but listen, they don't often go to other channels or mediums. They, they have a channel that they like. Maybe it's YouTube, maybe it's podcasts, whatever. And they don't tend to then go read blog posts or whatever. Like their main medium of taking in information is that one channel. So if you're not on that channel, you're probably missing an opportunity to reach people. And that's when I went, oh, crap. Okay. I hear you, Russell. I need to get this podcast rolling. So here we are. Now we're a few episodes in. I've done a whole bunch of episodes uh, within a few days, and I've already scheduled them out. But that was the thing that that helped me power through, okay? And so now, for a lot of this process, I'm a self-reliant achiever. I don't need to think about turning on the microphone and other things, but I am still what I would call capable but cautious in the production piece or the post-production piece or getting it submitted, doing the show notes, things like that. There's still some parts of the task that I still need to go through and make sure I pay very close attention to uh, if I'm gonna do this successfully, okay? So quick review. Four phases of learning, unconscious, incompetence. We don't know that we don't know what we're doing, but there's also knows the enthusiastic beginner. Phase two, conscious incompetence. We now know that we don't know what we're doing, and this is also called the disillusioned learner. Phase three is called conscious competence, meaning now we know what we're doing and we can do it, but we need to think about it 
also known as capable but cautious. And then the last phase is unconscious competence, meaning that we could do it without thinking about it. We could do it from a flow state. We don't, for many of you, that's like driving a car right now. You don't really think about driving a car, but when you first learn how to drive a car, you were thinking about it. You had to go through all the, the motions of checking your mirror and doing all that stuff, checking the speedometer. That would be conscious competence. But now you're unconsciously competent, meaning you don't really need to think about it. And we also call that the self-reliant achiever phase. Okay. So that you were going to run into this cycle in everything you learn, in everything you do, in every process that you go through, this is going to be it. So I just want you to be keenly aware when you hit that conscious incompetence phase or step two, the disillusioned learner, just know that it is coming and just revisit your why, revisit your purpose and say, yes, I still want to continue to do this. And so I need to push through. I need to power through. Yes, this is frustrating. Perhaps I can find some other people to help me. Perhaps I can outsource some of it. Maybe I could take a course or do some things that will help me get through it faster. And that's where the biggest investment of both time and money will probably happen for, for you to get over the hump, right? I call that the speed bump on the road to progress. You're going to have it right there. And so as you're doing something new, as you're putting that stuff out there, just know it's going to happen. Be aware of it and then do your own little pattern interrupt to say, Whoop, okay, Dave told me this would happen. Here it is. Now what the heck am I going to do about it to power through? Okay. So I hope this serves you. And again, I'm sharing all of this stuff so that you can unleash your awesome talents and abilities and skills on the world. And so don't wait. Don't wait to do that. You have really cool things that people in your audience in your world the people that you impact and reach right now they need you to share your mes message they need you to use your skills your talents and abilities they need you to get that out there so don't play small okay so until next time unleash your own awesome on the world and we'll see you on the next episode later thanks for listening to unleash the awesome please be sure to subscribe rate and review wherever you listen to your podcasts and please share us on your favorite social media platforms using hashtag UnleashAwesome.